Chapter 39. During the night, March doubled back and grabbed April by the scruff of the neck and flung it another week or two down the road. When Maniac slipped silently from the house at dawn, the only way he'd ever managed to get away, March pounced with cold and nasty paws. The Maniac wasn't minding. The reunion had been ecstatic and tearful and nonstop happy. And inside, he was pure July. He was half a block up Sycamore before he stopped tiptoeing. Minutes later, he crossed Hector. The streets were dry. An occasional scrap of chewed rawhide was all that remained of the worms. Hours later, Russell and Piper spotted him three blocks off. Maniac, you're alive. We thought they got you. We thought they slit your throat. We thought they strangled you and pulled your tongue out. We thought they chopped your head off and, and, and boiled you. Yeah, they boiled you and drunk your blood. Yeah, and drunk your brains. You don't drink brains, you moron meatball. Yeah, you do. Brains are like milkshakes, like Dairy Queen. You can drink them with a straw. You can hear them sloshing if you shake your head hard enough. Listen. Hey, get off my head. Hey, help. They were off and running. Maniac couldn't help laughing. In spite of their twisted, ludicrous impressions of the East Enders, the concern and the tears in their eyes had been genuine. They had, they had really missed him. They had really been afraid for him. Two houses away, he could hear the thump, almost feel it, in Father George McNabb's voice. Lay him down easy, I said. Easy! Followed by son John. This easy enough? Thump! Followed by a string of curses from George McNabb that fried the cold morning like an egg. Living room was hazy with dust. At the back end of the dining room, they were bringing in the cinder blocks. George and John had a hand and a handful of cobras lugging and grunting them in from the backyard and dumping them onto the floor. Thump, thump. Hey, kid, George McNabb was pointing through the haze. Three months and he still didn't know his tenant's name. Get your lily hide over here. Start lugging these. Maniac waved. Later, gotta go. He shut the door and headed up the street. So they were really doing it. He had heard them planning it for weeks, making drawings, buying or stealing cement, trowels, a level. A pillbox, they called it. Once it was done, they'd be ready. Let the revolt begin. Let the rebels, as they called the East Enders, come. Let them bust through the newly installed bars, over the plywood on the windows. Let them bust through the steel door. They'll find, them stare, find themselves staring down the barrel of a little surprise. They squabbled over what the surprise should be. Uzi? AK-47? Bazooka? Why? Maniac had asked Giant John one day. Why what? Why are you doing all of this? To get ready. What else? Well, what do you think's going to happen? What's going to happen? Giant John swatted a squad of roaches from the kitchen table and sat down. What's going to happen? One of these days, they're going to revolt. Who says? Who cares who says? You think they're going to make an announcement? Maniac tried to picture Amanda and Hester and Lester and Bowwell storming the barricades. When's all this supposed to happen? John shrugged. You never know. Maybe this summer. He jumped up, grabbed a beer from the fridge, flipped it open. They like to revolt in the summer. Makes them itchy. They like to overrun the cities. This time, we'll be ready. And he told Maniac what he often imagined, lying in bed, the black sweeping across Hector one steaming summer night, torches, chains, blades, guns, war cries, marauding, looting, overrunning the West End, climbing in through smashed windows, doors, looking for whites, bloodthirsty for whites, like Indians in the old days, Indians on a raid. That's what they are, John, John nodded thoughtfully. Today's Indians. The cockroach strolling up his pant leg wasn't the only thing making Maniac feel crawly. He shook off the roach. He moved to the center of the kitchen to surround himself with as much space as possible. But other people, he said, I don't hear them talking about revolts. Nobody else wants to make a pillbox. Giant John tilted the last of the beer into his mouth. Maybe when we do, he grinned, they will. That had been weeks before, and now the pillbox was underway. No longer an idea in the backyard, but a reality in the dining room. 
Now there was no room that Maniac could stand in the middle of and feel clean. Now there was something else in that house and it smelled worse than garbage and turds.